Mr Keating, thanks for joining us. It'll be a pleasure not to be here. The Gospel according to Paul, is this the autobiography you always said you'd never write? <sighs> no, 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 not at all. I, uh, I agree with the late, great Samuel Goulburn who said that uh, no one should write an autobiography until after they're dead. Now this is uh, simply an opportunity to remind people what political courage looks like, what leadership looks like. I mean, there are generations born in this country who labour under the misapprehension that Malcolm Turnbull is a leader. You know, he couldn't lead a Mardi Gras parade if he was Ian Thorpe wearing a bikini. So no insights into your life, your history? Well, yes, in so much as I provide a context to illustrate the profound depths of my contribution to the public life of this nation. Uh, so basically, we'll be starting at Bankstown, 1944, and going on from there. But don't hold your breath waiting for anything about my family. They are strictly off limits. I signed up for the public spotlight, not them. That glare, that relentless intrusion, I never asked for it, never wanted it. You know, I was talked into doing a, a spread at the lodge for the Women's Weekly, you know, like that was going to help with the recalibration of monetary policy and those jumpers, Jesus. You know, who thought the festive knitwear was a good idea? I look like the illegitimate son of Al Grasby and Jenny Key. But perhaps you'll give us some insight into your many, many years in Canberra. Well, Canberra was a very different place when I arrived there back in 69. There were no hipster bars or boutique gin distilleries back then. Senate Estimates was considered a good night out. You know, no one worried about MPs rooting parliamentary entitlements, A, because you very rarely got any, and B, there was fuck all to spend them on if you did. You know, the only helicopters in the country were being shot at in Vietnam, so you couldn't hire one to get to a fundraiser. Of course, you were briefly in the Whitlam Ministry. Well, yes, for about five minutes, and then Sir John Kerr came along and the whole thing folded like a pack of cards. I said to Gough, I said, you know, we, we should put this bloke under house arrest. But half the caucus just had a steak for lunch and went home. Norman Gunston hung around Parliament House longer than they did. So there we were back in opposition and uh, staring at Malcolm Fraser for the next eight years. He was like an Easter Island statue with an arse full of razor blades. And we, we were a parliamentary rump that wouldn't feed a family of four. And little Johnny Howard, you know, the Bowser boy, he was the treasurer. Well, that was a sign on his door. I mean, if you thought Peter Costello was economically backward, Howard made him look like Warren Buffett. And then Bob Hawke arrived. Yes, yes, and in his deluded mind he thought he was the second coming of Christ, walking across the waters of Lake Burley Griffin to show us sinners the way to salvation. But the thing about Bob, you know, half the Australian population agreed with that assessment. They would have voted for Bob if he'd been a functioning alcoholic, a serial womaniser or a pathological narcissist. And I think we'll leave that there. You guided the Australian economy through some pretty rigorous restructuring. Listen, sweetheart, I, I didn't guide it. I dragged it kicking and screaming into the 20th century. You know, Menzies had done nothing in the three centuries that he ran the shop. I had to give the Australian public a crash course on economics, tariff reductions, quarantining the central bank, lowering the corporate tax rate for the right reasons, you know, correcting the structural deficit. These, these were words I'd never heard of. This was the stuff that Ross Gittins used to dream of when he was a kid, you know, locked away in the bathroom with a copy of the Financial Review and a box of Kleenex. But it made you extremely unpopular with the Australian electorate. Well, as the great Jack Lang once told me, he said, Mr Keating, you will never be somebody until you have a reasonable stock of enemies. Well, by 1996, I was well and truly somebody. And that stock included the man you overthrew, Bob Hawke. Well, you know... Bob and I were the, uh, the Romulus and Remus of Australian politics. I built Rome and it was Bob's job to sell it to the plebs. You know, he would earn the political capital, I'd burn it. But uh, when he ratted on the Curabilly Agreement, well, that, that hurt, that, that cut very deeply. And, uh, the, you know, in this game, everyone gets carried out in a box. But sometimes you do need to be told when it is your turn to get into the box. And when you finally got to be Prime Minister, it looked like you didn't really want it. 
I think you've been reading too much Don Watson. No, 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 no look, look at the facts. Exhausted as I was by nine years of being the world's greatest treasurer, I knocked over John Hewson, though to be perfectly honest, you know, Christopher Pine could have knocked over John Hewson, but I pushed through Marbo and the Native Title Act, APEC, came within a whisker of the Republic being taken seriously in this country. You know, this, 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 this was big picture stuff. This was tremendously difficult, tremendously difficult stuff. But then the public voted in John Howard. I have great faith in the intelligence of the Australian public. All right, that's a joke. But look, you know, you can have too much of a good thing and uh, obviously they had had too much of me. So are you looking forward to touring the country and reminding them that you're still here? Well, as you know, I, I do like to keep a very low profile, but I can still throw the switch to vaudeville. And I am very much looking forward to visiting all those places I used to fly over at 30,000 feet on the way to Paris. Paul Keating, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I oh, don't forget to uh, read out the dates and the ticket prices.